Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for watching us today. My name is Carol Ann. I'm from SassyTownHouseLiving.com, and I'm so super excited to, to have with us today Michael Horn. Michael Horn has over 44 years of experience as a science researcher and began his study and research into the UFO contacts of Billy Meyer. Am I saying his name right, Michael? Yes. Is it yes, Meyer? Billy Meyer. Back in 1979. So, Michael, thank you so much again. Um, there's so many folks that just can't get enough of this information, especially in today's world, given what's going on with UAPs. And I still like to call them UFOs, but... Yes. <laughs> um, I'm glad you do, frankly. Yeah, I mean, UAPs is such a government like made terminology but and then i heard they changed it from um aerial to anom anomalous or something which is like even crazier yeah so we can just call them ufos that's perfectly fine but michael if you could give us some more of your background because it's so rich and deeply ingrained uh in this whole billy meyer thing too especially i saw a documentary years ago that you were in and it was just fascinating. I don't know if it's still available on Amazon. I think I did yeah. see it. Is it still available there? Yes, I'm pretty sure uh, we have a couple of them up different places. And, uh, I, you know, I can give everybody the names of them later or something. Yeah, that like. would be great. That would be great. So yes, please tell us about yourself. Sure. Um, my entire you know background is quite varied and so i unless you really wanted i i won't go into it necessarily but i will tell you as it specifically pertains to billy meyer case indeed uh over well 44 years ago i began looking into this information i bought a book in a bookstore in los angeles it was uh not uh unlike this book that's behind me, it, it's a it was a photo book that had the first photos from the Billy Meyer contacts. The man has taken hundreds and hundreds of extremely uh, clear, still irreproducible UFO photos. So I bought the book and that began my study. It would be several years after that that I would uh, come in contact with, in possession of 1,800 pages of the earliest translations of the transcripts of this man's conversations allegedly with these extraterrestrial human beings a very important distinction in today's world uh human beings just like us uh significantly more advanced but otherwise like us so i began uh reading and researching this information in 1986 in two years later, I saw a new article, new discoveries from the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, where they had just discovered a connection between the ozone damage and atomic bomb testing. The only problem was, and it struck me at the time, why do I already know this information? And I reached under my bed and I had the first hundred pages. At that time, the Things were what we called mimeographed. If you may remember, <laughs> you're not old enough, probably. Were they were run off on a machine, and you know, hand cranked, oftentimes, and, and it was like a primitive version of Xerox, if we want to use that as a kind of overriding term for you know the reproduction uh, today of uh, you know printed material electronically. So to the point, eighteen hundred pages of uh, conversations allegedly again with extraterrestrials between 75 and 78. And in that first 100 page block out of 18 that I had, mm -hmm. there was information about the ozone damage tied in to the atomic bomb testing and radiation, as well as references in the conversation between this woman and Billy Meyer She's saying, well, as you've known since the 1950s, and I would later dis discover that he was already writing about these dangers when he was a teenager. So this ultimately would lead me 
beyond the great phenomenal UFO evidence, incomparable today, even still irreproducible photos, because no matter how good a model can be made of something, you can't fake the computer when it starts looking for certain factors that only a large object, a distance from the camera can possibly uh, you know, deliver, if you will. As a matter of fact, since I'm talking about that type of a thing, and some of these, my big head's going to block them a little bit, but I'm going to try to show you just to introduce it here. We have plenty. As I said, Billy Meyer took well over 1,200 photos. This is not a model on a string any more than this, which I have to figure out which way to dodge, is a model on a string. It's a UFO in front of a tree, and there are nine photos in this series where the UFO actually goes around the tree here, as you can't see, this is another one. And we can see it. Okay, good. You know, just it's what I can do with the photos as much as I can do. Tell well, me. of course, Michael, I'll have your website running across the screen. Okay. Is it they fly? Um, Blog.com. Blog.com. Of course, I'll have that running across the screen. Thanks. So these stunningly clear photos, primarily daytime, even though we've got some nighttime ones that are pretty amazing, and I'll, I'll, I'll show a couple later. These photos are incomparable. They're better than anything the government trots out to this day. Mm. And we may get a little farther into that discussion about what the government has and what they don't have by choice, what mm. they refused. However, coming back to it, after a while, when I had seen that first co corroboration in 1988 of information that I could prove was at least published two years before, and most likely, because it's in this material, that was claims 1975 transcript, no reason to not think so. There was no internet at that time, nothing like that. That began my, let's say, increased awareness about information and this information, I, I came to call it the higher standard of proof. The reason for that is that while even though these photographs have been independently authenticated, analyzed and authenticated since 1978 with people using progressively better technology and even astronaut USAF uh, intelligence officers, all these people, yeah, that's real and all this stuff. People will still argue about photographs because skeptics literally cannot handle, mm. they can't handle it. Right. However, there's one thing the what I call this higher standard of proof is also what I refer to as the prophetically accurate, scientific, geopolitical, environmental, medical, and environmental. I said that already, and economic information verifiably published by this man before any official publication. That means that we were able to find copyrighted books and documents, copyrights, where these things are published and you can't fake out a copyright. Mm -hmm. You can make claims all day long, but as I... Okay, a little anecdote about this part, just because it's so important to, for people to understand where this is going to go. In 2013, I was invited by MUFON. MUFON's an organization that basically represents itself as involved with the study and collection of UFO information. It's somewhat of a CIA front, and I actually can prove that. I don't want to go too far into that, but I have people that have come out from aerospace and top secret clearances who people are still working there with those clearances. We have a chain of command of information. They've tried, the CIA has tried to recruit people via MUFON for UFO disinformation. Mm. That being said, people can take it or leave it. It's okay. MUFON's out there. You know, we're not trying to take MUFON down. They do what they do. However, they invited me, strangely enough, to an event in Las Vegas where they gave me a table to display books and videos and all this stuff. 
And at that time, they were showing, maybe even the film you saw, they were featuring it without my ever knowing about it until later. They're featuring it in one of their little theaters. So I thought it was funny, but I was there and I have a good sense of humor about these things. And I'm standing at my table and a friend of mine from Texas, his name is Blake, is sitting off to my side, to my left. And an older guy, you know, kind of now we're my ages, I guess, he comes over. He's got his arms crossed and he's shaking his head like this, frowning. I said, hey, excuse me, sir, can I help you? Mm. Yeah. I'm very interested in this UFO topic, but this Billy Meyer case, is it? It's got to be a hoax. I said, really? I didn't know that. What do you do, sir? I'm a retired judge. Hmm. Your Honor, I said, May I step into your courtroom? Well, yes, you can. How can I help you? Guy was just, he was just right in the moment with it. He'd made his statement. Now he'd moved on to the next thing, which was my stepping into his virtual imaginary courtroom. I said to him, Your Honor, if I tell you that NASA's claim that they're the first to discover the reason why the surface of Mercury is contracting, is a false claim because my buddy in Switzerland, he 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 came up with that 30 years before NASA. Would I have to prove that to you? Now I knew the answer, but he said to me, well, of course you'd have to prove it. So I reached over just like I would be doing now. And I grabbed a book. It was a book. This is a book, different book, but it's also about the Meyer case because he's a very prolific author. The book that I grabbed, however, was a book of the better translated transcripts that I had. And they had been done by the lead military investigator in the case. I don't want to go too far afield, but they're in a book. I said, Your Honor, open the book. Just like, it's kind of like this. Your Honor, do you see the copyright dates down here? Can you see that, Your Honor? Oh, yes, I can see that. And I knew where the thing was. So I said, so over here in this copyright, and I, I don't think I said the word guy, I was thinking it. I said, in this contact report, which is dated over here, such and such 1975, mm -hmm. I said, do you see where this man, Billy Meyer, asks this alleged extraterrestrial woman, Semyaze? I want to know, I've always wanted to know, what's the reason for the contraction of the surface of the planet Mercury, and she says to him, oh, that's not difficult. It's because of the metal core of the planet. Mm. And NASA discovered that, Your Honor, 32 years later. So I have a question for you, sir. In your courtroom here, who prevails, NASA or? He said, you do. How much is the book? How much is the video? Bought up everything, went off, and I saw him later sitting in one of the theaters where they're playing the film. My film again, and I kind of laughed. So this is how, in a matter of however long it just took me to tell you that, mm. and less if I have to present it, boom, 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 I can prove it to you beyond a reasonable doubt to a legal and scientific standard that space travel is involved in the Billy Meyer context because this man in 1975 didn't have access to getting to the planet of Mercury and examining it. Our probe hadn't gotten there. We didn't have anything, any technology that could determine that until NASA mm -hmm. discovers it. And it gets better, and I won't go into that quite yet, but in this kind of copyrighted material, we have over 250 specific error-free examples of it. We prove to a scientific and legal standard that the people who are doing the space traveling and taking Mr. Meyer with them and Mr. Meyer are not only both space travelers, they are verifiably ironclad scientific and legal standard of proof. Time travelers. And that's why, if we get to look at it, some of the events unfolding right now today and that have been unfolding since he published them 
are long specifically foretold and now basically unstoppable in their fulfillment with some exceptions if we the people of earth decide to not censor this man who has survived 25 documented attempts in his life because of his trouble so that's a little opener here. I might have gone a little far afield, but I'm excited. No, about not at all. I don't know about this. Let's let's tell the folks who Billy Meyer is and like a little bit of his origin story. Billy Meyer is a now uh, slightly over 86 year old Swiss man. He has uh, one arm. So he lost most of his left arm in a very bad bus accident in Turkey in 1965. As a boy, he was, even at the youngest of ages, he was fascinated with the nature. He lived in, he was growing up in a beautiful, you know, pastoral part of rural Switzerland. He would s- sit at his bedroom window, sometimes even crawl outside of it just to look at the night sky. He felt a very strong draw to the cosmos, if you will, to mm-hmm. something which was greater than himself. And interestingly enough, at the age of five, he claims, he heard a man's voice speaking to him in his head, in his uh, Swiss-German dialect, and he couldn't understand quite what was happening, but uh, it was not a a frightening or threatening, it was just very unusual and puzzling. And what happened was, then it was, I think, a matter of several days later, perhaps, that he's outside again playing and he feels drawn to go into the the woods. You know, Switzerland is full of abundant forests. And he went and there was a clearing and he looks and he sees an elderly looking man standing next to a pear-shaped object on struts. And the man is wearing what he says, looked to me as a child, like a deep sea diver suit without the helmet attached. And he said, the man just was very benevolent in in the what came from him was a benevolence and a, and a lovely energy i felt no threat and he beckoned me to come forward we went on board this craft for the first time and this began his supposedly 11 year tutelage with this man who was called svath who at that time as, as meyer said looked like he was 90 years old he turned out to be about 10 times that age and he used various technologies that he had and educated him over this time, took him around our world, took him off this world to see different places, certainly in our solar system and perhaps beyond, and took him over the many years that they were together towards the teen years, ostensibly took him traveling, not just in space, but also in time. Now, I want to say for for everybody out there so that you folks know, there are things in this material, a vast number of them, that other investigators before me, me, people that work as contemporaries to me, we have proven to scientific and legal standards, really credible, independent analysis and authentication. We publish and post all this for free. You can vet it. There are things I cannot prove, nor can I disprove them. Most of them will take... Uh, let's say, you know, be concerned with uh, events, circumstances from either the far distant past that we may not know anything about, things that may differ very much with what our so-called history has, you know, what it contains and has been presented to us, and also things from the then future and still future to us, but certainly things that... um, would not yet have occurred that have been foretold. Mm -hmm. We can prove, as I said, that things have been published at a certain time and have happened. Error-free, never redaction, retraction, editing, apologies, theories, no theories. These people do not give theories. They give, they say, we know this, and they say, we don't know that. So they don't pretend. No beliefs. None whatsoever. They don't have beliefs in anything. They either know or they don't know. Mm -hmm. It's a refreshing way to live. And of course, if we were 
to dare to live that way, we would uh, very quickly put an end to the conflicts in our world. Yes, based we would. Where did he say these uh, beings were from in the galaxy? Sure, they come from a system that they call the Pleiars, P-L-E-J-A-R-E-S, in the direction of but 500 light years past, what we know as the Pleiades, Pleiades in the yeah. There's no life in the Pleiades. There's no Pleiadians. Billy Meyer is the first person to use the term. Well, wh why would he use it if there's no Pleiadians? And he asked that question to these people, and they said, refer to us as Pleiadians when you start to publish all this stuff from now on. But why? He said, there's no, there's no life in the Pleiades. You're not Pleiadians. They said, we know that, and you know that. But all of the people who will pretend, who will lie for one reason or another, and say that they are channeling us, in contact with us, meeting with us, bearing our children, et cetera, et cetera, will all then self-identify as liars, deliberate, or just through their own imbalance. But you won't have to ask us each time because there's going to be a lot of them coming out of the woodwork once this... And there are. There's a lot of them that oh, claim, please. you know, that the that they're they exist in that part of the galaxy and that they contact them and channel them. And so that's all fictitious then. Absolutely. And there's wow. no evidence that any of them have ever, this is what staggers me as somebody who is, I've been to Switzerland 21 times. I've questioned, tried to trick Meyer four, four times in three years of, over something. He said, just because I knew, well, I remember what he said. I wonder Oh, each time, same exact facts, never a pause. Right. And we have all the evidence. There is not among any, any UFO experts, investigators, and researchers, channelers, and contactees, one, pe one piece of independently authenticated evidence of anything of extraterrestrial manufacture. And that... I've put that out many times. People get very mad. Oh, well, what about... So I said, send me the evidence. Mm -hmm. I don't mind if there's more. I've got plenty to deal with here. You can... But where's the evidence? And may I just float it in now to tell you that this current round of UFO, UAP hearings going on in Washington, uh, you're going to find the same thing. Mm -hmm grainy photos funny videos nothing definitive people that say i have been privy to this information that's nice any proof any evidence so so what about the tic tac um videos and things sure. you're saying that these things are not legit as well they're just government psyops or not necessarily this is where it gets interesting so let me give you some of the information. Meyer has been publishing information for a very long time about something that, well, he's first of all, let's, let's cover the secret military craft. Mm -hmm. UFO technology has been in development since the 1920s by various, usually secret scientific military groups. High level, maybe secret military with the government, but also independent groups who are working with various things. Because, for instance, you know, the Germans are very advanced technologically in yeah. many ways. They got some help during the Second World War, a big mistake, but they got it. And they did develop al some alternative craft. I'll leave that for the moment to simply say, yes, there's plenty of alternative craft that have been cited for a long time. However, According to Meyer's information, going back a long time as well, there's what they, these Playaran people have referred to, and Meyer uses the term earth foreigners. So they explain the following. First, human beings of earth know nothing about our true, true ancient origins, not only as naturally arising life forms, on this planet, which human beings appear on planets, not everywhere, not every planet, but on planet, and no, none of them in this solar system have bear human life, but throughout the universe, on planets that are ready to support the next level of a higher 
life form. It's already gone into the microbes, into this and the, mm-hmm. the seas. And then there's little, there's algae and there's this and there's that. And there's insects and fish and birds and creatures, mammals and what. And then human beings may arise, as has also been the case here. And there's additional information in the Meyer case about where it really happened. It's just fascinating stuff. Our scientists don't know it, but it's okay. They're on to it. But there's also a history of over 22 million years of extraterrestrial human beings coming and going. Obviously far more advanced. And obviously, if we're going back that far, in many cases coming to a very primeval world that would only be hospitable for a time because they would have the technology to, you know, base themselves in some relatively safe place where the, the dinosaurs aren't coming clapping around all over, even though we know that according to our, you know, history, they were, you know, destroyed 43 million years prior to that, supposedly. But there were still all sorts of creatures on Earth and threatening conditions. But there were also those that, in the interim periods as we get closer, even a few million years ago, who came and lived here for a time. They may have encountered then difficulties, illnesses, what have you. They would flee or their technology failed. And so they had to survive then, being the only ones around at the time. And in in survival mode, having to now, they've got to find their food. They can't make it through their technologies and all this. And so they would actually revert back to very tribal ways of living. They didn't have connections technologically of any sort. And then some would emerge over time as a you know primitive earth race. And uh, some would be able to re-pursue the evolutionary path if there was enough information. All of this information and more mm. is in here. So how is that connected to the TikTok video? Okay just to give you some things to think about. There have been on this world extraterrestrials who represented themselves at various times as the various gods of our religions, including, let's see, well, Indian religion, um, Judeo-Christian religion, even Islamic because some of the, and some of those people were in contact then with very select few people over history, very small number, who were their contact people and then performed a function similar to what Billy Meyer does, which is to bring to the people of Earth, not see they didn't come in the past to bring the UFO technology because pardon me, people have, the, have never even seen a pencil, a bicycle, it's too much. And so some Mm-hmm. of the reports in the holy books the imanas and wheels within they're describing it but that wasn't what was important what was important for these contact people like enoch elijah jeremiah mm-hmm. was to bring forward information to begin to try to educate primitive still primitive even though people had tribes and they're building little cities and what have you, still primitive people to understand more about life because the extraterrestrials also knew some of them, not, you know, the ones who weren't trying to create God cults around them and all, they knew that this was going to go south eventually. So what they were trying to do was to in, in, input into these worlds, the teaching that the extraterrestrials themselves live by. Now, not the full-on everything, but enough of it, the introduction into it, so that they, human beings, could learn how the universe really did work, how life worked, how there's nobody and nothing punishing you. Everything works according to several immutable universal laws, like cause and effect. Mm. When you do this, you know, it's kind of like you know the law of the pendulum. You send this thing out, and something comes back. So if you want, you know, if some of these things, the principles are basic and simple. Can you believe how off we've gone in thousands of years? Because 
we go back with these gods, you know, thousands of years. There's some that are even earlier, but for our purpose right now, trying to understand the Tic Tac video. Okay. Are we ever going to get to the Tic Tac video? <laughs> some descendants of some of these civilizations that were here that had rulers who were the gods of the time. Some of them survived and uh, went underground quite literally. There were other races that came here and then also took subterranean places. As Billy Meyer said about one race, I was asking him about this. I have something out called, you know, the explanation of the Tic Tac video about the Tic Tac video. He said there are five basic groups, five, that are based here. They make no contact with people. Their craft are seen frequently because they do fly around the planet. They can come in and out of the earth unobserved that they prefer because they mm. have very advanced technologies. And four of these groups are connected to extraterrestrials. Their ancestors in the past are extraterrestrials. One of the groups is what they call the future earth travelers who are people from uh, the distant earth who finally survived what's coming, survived it, and then rebuilt and developed technologies by which they could travel somewhat in space and time. And they're observing how it happened, how what ended up being, let's say, maybe hundreds of years of rebuilding and development, how it ever got thrown back to that place. And that's what we're approaching now, but I'll leave that for the moment. So these people are time travelers, but they're from Earth. And they're essentially that's... coming back from the future. So yes. there's going to be a lot of people asking um, uh, so many questions, obviously. But just getting back to the Meyer thing, um, why do you think he or uh, you've had so many co decades of conversations with him? Why does he think he was chosen, number one? Number two, did he ever take video? Because he certainly took enough photographs. Mm -hmm. And what's the status today with his relationship to these beings? Like, I know I'm asking so many questions. You're fine. Think. That's what we're here for. I'm going to do my best. <laughs> do, yeah. And why, why aren't they showing themselves to humanity? Like, why not just... Sure. You know, come out and show yourself. Well, there's a few reasons. So you asked first his, his connection. Yeah. And, and, and so, why was he chosen? Why does he believe he was chosen? Okay. Well, Billy himself, we are, you know, told, I'm just looking to make sure I've got something for you here. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Uh, Billy himself has no beliefs about anything. So he says, and I think it's quite true. Quite obviously true. But let's let's look at that. He's asked them the question uh, for the sake of these transcripts as well, because all of these, now there's over 45,000 pages that he's got of information, 60 plus books. And the books aren't all about UFOs, hardly. It's about the reasons. It's a teaching and what, what we're here for. So he said, okay, um, how is it that I, I think he asked this as a young person, you know, am in contact with you. What is this about? And they explained, they said, and this, again, folks, there's no beliefs here and you don't have to buy into anything. I simply will tell you, according to the information, you think it through for yourself. We can't prove what I'm about to tell you. He said, what they said to him was the following. Every human being has an aspect of them that they refer to, and we, many people here call it, the immortal human spirit. They say this is quite different from what your religions call the soul. The spirit is located in a superior colliculus or something like that in the brain. I always mess that word up. That's deep inside this, in the center of the brain. It is, it, it operates the, energetically. It doesn't, it isn't a consciousness, strangely enough. Then you have where the soul, if mm. it existed under those terms, which it do, doesn't, it exists here at the solar plexus. It, it, not to interrupt you, is that the penile gland you're talking about? It, no, it, it, it's something 
right not far from the pineal and pituitary gland, but placed, I think, a right. little It is an energetic part piece of the universal consciousness. Hmm. Every single human being here and anywhere else we may exist possesses this little piece. We don't, you know, most people know nothing about, well, what are we going to do? We can't see it. We can't feel it. Here is kind of the central location of the psyche, which also flows through and is connected to many parts of the human body. But this is where we have our sense of our identity, our consciousness is Got a big element here, our ego, our feelings, lots of things. This is temporary. Mm. When we pass away, this is dissolving while all of the information from this personality, as it's connected to the psyche and everything else, is being stored forever. It's being stored in a separate kind of etheric place. It's not a it's not a little pastoral scene where Aunt Edna and Uncle Joe are there waving. There's a non-place as far as we are concerned. We never experience it as a personality. It's just information. That's why I say, hey, I can't prove this. Nobody can. But the spirit, the creation energy part piece, is immortal. And after we pass away as this personality, we will, meaning the spirit form, not the identity, reanimate, reincarnates and animates another body. Meaning that we have to come is, back here? Is that the deal? Yes. yes. Okay. We've been back probably <laughs> hundreds of thousands to millions of times already. Does the since... journey ever end where you don't come back here anymore? Mm -hmm. Why does Billy say that? Yes, but that is so far in the distance because... Uh, it, we can we can go there, but for the sake of this, to mm. stick with the why of Billy. Right. And I'm not running away. We've got tons of information on this. Fortunately, you can read a lot just for free online. And Billy explains. He's got a new book out. It's a fascinating book called Rebirth, Life, Dying, Death, and Sorrow. It's not a sad book at all. It explains. Can you, every... can you hold that up for us to see? And of sure. course, I'll put the link. Did they sell that on Amazon? No, you can get it from our bookstore. Let me see. I can do this. Okay, uh, we'll get a link to your bookstore then, Michael. Sure, sure. We we carry of Billy's sixty books. About ten or so have been translated into English. We carry all of them. We're probably the biggest English language distributor for the books. Uh, my most distant customer is in well. There's two. There's one in Mongolia. There's one. In Albania, wow. people that have been gotten to communicate with, they found a films like the film that you saw of ours, which was probably the Silent Revolution of Truth and, mm -hmm. that we put out years ago. So, with Billy, for those folks who say, "Well, but what?" Mm -hmm. So, this immortal part piece of every human being reincarnates. We are never the same person. We never have a really even a direct connection, except in the rarest of cases with certain people who are at certain levels of evolution, such as supposedly Meyer. But we benefit from what we completed, what our spirit completed as in its previous incarnations, plural, as previous personalities. This is never lost. Mm. And many things are never lost, like love. And there's a lot of things that are very different from what we're told either by religion or by all the misleading new age stuff where nobody knows what they're talking about. So they, these beings are human, essentially, that he was in. And they because I think I saw in the documentary a painting of a blonde woman, gorgeous, mm -hmm. not a photograph, but some kind of. Am I right about that or am I? Yeah, now we now have. Yeah, there were drawings, mainly the well-rendered drawings. Right, and we right. now have a good number of them from uh, showing, you know, the people that, some of the people that he's been in touch with, some of the previous prophets connected to him and, and to this mission. And it, believe me, it's very controversial when you get into that. You know, there's, there's reasons why there have been 25 attempts on Meyer's life. So... Oh, are we was, talking like government attempts or like men in black attempts? Like... All the above. Kind of and, yeah. 
and individuals, mainly with individuals, people who feel very threatened by this. Uh, very any number of times there were very religious people who felt ah. this must be the devil. You know, all sorts of things that human beings seem to be afflicted by without r- rational thinking. And to, to just finish a little more on this reincarnation mm-hmm. business, the spirit that the creation energy that animates Billy Edward Albert Meyer, the one-armed guy in this life, is was said by these people to say, these are your previous incarnations, Enoch, Elijah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Emmanuel, Muhammad, all of whom were legitimate contact people and who are all involved and were in bringing this material forward. Now, also, because once you're in a incarnation reincarnation cycle meyer like everybody else has had lifetimes in between not very dramatic ones some were some famous composers and different things according to this information but while it's important if you want to study this and get a sense of wait a minute okay this teach oh now this is me for the sake of this conversation as an introduction simply the information presented and so people will always, all the way through this, have to do what the foundational teaching, in this case, the foundational teaching says to us. And that is that every human being is singularly themselves solely responsible for everything in their own lives. No outside forces, real or imaginary, Savior, saints, gods, gurus, mullahs, you know, rabbis. Nobody is responsible for your life. You and I are responsible for our own lives. As Billy has also said, each human being is the smith, the one who forges their own destiny. That's the good news or the bad news, depending on how people view life. Is there a karmic aspect to that as well? Um, Do we carry? Oh, really? So that's a tricky one here in a way. As we said, there's no direct connection to the past life. And the way the universe is apparently set up, those things that a person learns, the positives, if you will, in their life, those things are actually stored in a storage bank and something called the consciousness block. And they become usually more sub or unconsciously available to us in subsequent incarnations reincarnations of the spirit but we don't get we don't carry over blame and suffering and punishment because punishment is not bestowed if you will upon us by any external force or being we do wow. when we die we aren't going to risk being dipped in hot lead because we were bad boys and girls this is how religions keep people entrapped and Absolutely. fearful. Absolutely. Oh. So what does happen is that those negatives, there may be lessons that a person will uh, has only gone so far with, and they may fi- find another form of it. There may be lessons that we've gone as far as what we now have as we come in with certain abilities. Human beings, you notice how some people come in with this talent or that talent. However, I I don't want to try to say that I can explain exactly how it works, but we are not burdened with any karma. So here's here's the logic, if you will. If we take the premise of reincarnation, what would be fair about the universe punishing an innocent baby, basically, it's born into this life with the so-called sins and faults Mm -hmm. of the past... No, we're born with a clean slate with certain attributes that are being impulsed. We're sourcing this unconsciously, some of this, even in the womb. And as we grow up and through the teaching in these books, we learn to become more sensitive, not always to say, oh, I'm getting something from this life. But we start to be able to tune in more and develop and the affinities we have for certain talents and abilities, some of that is assisted by these impulses, by things that draw us. But then why would we choose all the sickness and negativity? A lot of that is the way we're educated. We have been pitted against each other for 10,000 years. 
as Billy says, in the past 10,000 years, there have been 250 cumulative, cumulative years of peace. Human beings have had cumulative 250 years of peace in 10,000 years. Well, start looking back and seeing when belief systems, tribal, cultic, religious, and then political things enter in. All of it, all of those things are oppositional. Mm. This is right. That is wrong. We are the only one. Like Billy could say, yes, I'm the only contact person. It's just a fact. And you can determine whether I'm telling the truth or not. But just the same, if somebody says they're a contactee and this and that, ask for the evidence. There is none. None. Zero. And I don't care who has me. I, I, I started checking that part out starting in 1986. I was living in L.A. I went to every channeling event. I, could, if I was studying UFO cases. I came away with about as much significant information as would fill about a quarter of this cup. And that's being generous. Nothing. Wow. No proof. No evidence. So, and nobody has to believe. And, and, and sure, you know what? I, sometimes people get angry hearing this. I say, well, that's your choice. You don't have to accept it. What you could accept is it's been presented. Now I want to find out if I can determine whether it's true or not. Yeah. Tell me where in history politics and religion have brought true lasting peace. Yeah, never. Never. Yeah. Politics. People always say politics is the art of the possible. I said, no, it's the art of advantage. Advantage. And it's full of lies and deceit and, and diplomacy. Meyer said diplomacy is fancy version of lie telling. People are trying to get something from each other rather than turning and facing the same direction and looking for what the truth is. What's the truth of things? Are you going to be able to recognize the truth when it's presented to you, when you find it? Or are you going to say, well, my book says, you know, I, I, I said to people, because I've encountered skeptics, highly religious people who are mad about this, I said, look, Every religion, everyone that I know of, in terms of certainly Judeo-Christian and other, you know, religions that are established for a long time, I'm not talking about pantheistic thing. religions, but they're founded on this principle that is absolutely inadmissible in a court of law or kindergarten. And that premise is what's in this book my book, my holy book is true because this book says it's true. Mm. Try that anywhere. No, you will oftentimes, I uh, may still go on in a court of law. They're, they're going to tell you to swear on a book that isn't admissible evidence in that court of law. But whoever thinks about it, whoever thinks about it, you can, or you can say, oh, well, sure, you can admit, you can say, Your Honor, in this book, in this Bible, in this holy book, it says thus and so. And you can say, yes, so. It's true because, no, it's not true because it's in a book. That's why, as we started off in the beginning, I said, what we have here is to a scientific and legal standard of proof. Mm. Absolutely ironclad evidence of space traveling and time traveling extraterrestrials, and a man named Billy Meyer, who also does the same. Now, I'm going to see if I have this thing here that I'm looking for. While, While you're looking for that, that yes, the, whole karma, the whole karma thing has my mind blown. It's like a cognitive dissonance thing because I've always believed in karma. Like, you know, you kind of get it, get what you put out in return, that kind of thing. That's the that law of cause and effect. But it doesn't carry over, doesn't force its way into our next incarnation. That's what we have to understand. Here's a video you asked. Oh, wow. I don't think I've seen that. Okay. And and we'll, so the, this is a short video from 1981. And um, wow. you're about to see. So let me narrate this just briefly, and we'll get past this part of it. It's talking about what you're going to see. There's an object, and I'm going to move out of the way. 
Well, Michael, would you be able to send them to me so I can insert that in the, okay. I'm going to be able to do that. So what we have here, I'll think I'll go this way. Billy Meyer is down over here. He just walked, oops, sorry. Right, I he see him. Right. You are right, yeah. Right, now watch this. You see the tree in the distance. Yep. Billy Meyer now went back and he starts shortly to zoom in. 1981, no digital, no fancy. It is not forced perspective. In the background, that's mountains. The tree is indistinct because it's not a small tree close to the camera. There's pruning marks and all sorts of stuff. That object itself is over 20 feet in diameter. Diameter, And so Billy, you know, I'll talk over this so that you can see what happens. He will zoom back even farther in a moment because he zoomed in. Okay, so then he had also taken a 35 millimeter photo. There he is, mm -hmm. one-armed man. He's in the foreground. That's an object way in the distance. And you will have all of this for, you know, for the channel. And there he is. He takes the photograph. And that's one of the photographs he took that day when he was filming. There it is. And we have other videos and I'll send you links to them. So We'll, we'll leave that for the moment, but you know, just so you know. And that craft, just so folks also know, well, you can see it behind me on the ground in front of his house. But I'm going to give you a little better. You know, they look so different than like the typical UFO. I mean, they've the imagery has changed dramatically over decades. Is that because they're... Uh, technology evolved and their crafts changed or you know. no it's because they have different types of craft and we don't know that so when you see something like that see this this object was also photographed at night i'm gonna just get myself out of the way here as best i yeah, can yeah 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 all right so it's photographed at night and it comes out like this <clears throat> mm -hmm. Oops, here we are and people the skeptics said Oh, that's just the gold model of, you know, in front of a black curtain, except a couple of photo experts started to take these non-digital photos, non-digital, pre-digital, and they inserted it in Photoshop and did a little bit of adjusting and they find this. Now, again, I'll, I have links to where you can find this and it'll be a little clearer. Now they see an object. Here's a grassy road. There is a little uh, meter high marker here there's a grassy hillside here oh, and there's that. an energy field around this craft we have also one other photo this is you, you can't do it you can take the photo right off the internet and throw it in photoshop and it's it comes through so it's not like billy myers able to hoax things in 1981 to trick our you know modern day state-of-the-art technology it's not what's going on here mm. and this is not a double exposure. These people were there being photographed one day in Switzerland, and when they nothing was visible in the sky, and when the photographer took the picture, had it developed, you know, remember the film, those old days? That's what they got. And there's there are other photos like that where the UFO appears where there's other people. So they and are technical doing... technical experts have authenticated these photographs to be legit. Yes, and the first analyses took place back in. Oh, I'll just step out of the way for this so you can see this one. Eh, if I can get myself out of the way here. Oh, uh, wow. That's taken from within a ship, two ships. Maybe I just come back here. Two ships, right? Ship in the sky. Yep. Another one in the sky above Switzerland. And this one, another one. Wow. Two ships taken from. This is what I'm telling you. Now, if, remember, I said the government has suppressed things here. Mm. My next so, question. Okay, like, sure, please. Why? What? Why? I mean, asking why is is I know yeah. why they do it. Well, but... I'm going to tell you my. This is you know I've Myers said certain things, and I'm not you know uh, uh, opposing them. As a matter of fact, they're incorporated. First, let me describe what you're looking at here. Off to your left, as you know, you're looking at the screen in the lower left-hand corner. There's a UFO. Mm -hmm. Up above, you can see the better part 
of a plane. Mm -hmm. All right, here's the story. Billy Meyer gets in touch with me in 2020, says, would you please go to a storage unit in Moab, Utah? We think there are archives there from Lieutenant Colonel Wendell Stevens. He was the lead investigator, military guy, Air Force, mm -hmm. and along with some private investigators, they all went to Switzerland over a 10-year period. And just, okay. And he says, go and see what's there. I said, okay. So we went to Moab, Utah. There's 24 boxes in a dusty kind of, uh, you know, storage unit. It's hot in Utah, even in October. And um, all weekend, going through by the last box, mm -hmm. I look in, neat little packet of photographs staring up at me. Now, I opened them up and I thought, you know, maybe this is from the, um, uh, what do you call it? You see the photograph here on the book behind me. There's a UFO. And that was a 19, I think, 76 photo where the UFO is in the sky. And then just off a bit more. Uh, let's see, where would it be? Right up above my. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so screwed up with this. There, above my finger, mm -hmm. there's the UFO in the sky. Okay, fine. So that was a Mirage jet from that was. Uh, the, the UFO from the, one of the ETs and a Mirage jet. Now, these photographs, I find that there were about seven or so, let's say. And at first I just look at, oh, must be more Mirage jet photos. Send mm -hmm. them back to Billy in Switzerland. And within about three, four days or so, they say, hey, those are not Mirage jets. That's a top secret U.S. stealth plane. These photos were taken in 1981 at Groom Lake, Area 51, not by Billy, by Wendell Stevens, the lead oh, investigator. Wow. And he had been helped by the, um, the pilot of this plane, who was named Asket. And Asket was his second extraterrestrial contact person for 11 years. And she took him through space and time. And she helped Wendell Stevens somehow, I'm still waiting for the full explanation, sequester himself safely at Area 51 to take these photos. He would have been shot on the spot. No question. You, who are you? Never mind. Blam. Because that's top secret stuff because they're dealing yeah. with. OK, so these show that the government, our government and there's phony UFO hearings are absolutely that. No threat from real extraterrestrials. And we can get to, well, what's going on? Who are these non-human aliens? I'll give you that in a minute because we didn't tell you yet. So I I think it was the next year I I was doing re outreach, trying to find people. Look at this. I sent the photos off to a guy. I found a guy. I sent him a, one sample photo. He was a, a photo expert. He worked at, he was formerly with Kodak. He was now independently. And I said, tell me, what, what do you get here? And he told me, he said, well, those two objects are in the same thing. There's no overlays. There's no glass. There's no tricks. The plane has a little bit of movement to it. So uh, that must have been flying in. That object is stationary. I said, now tell me what's on the back of this photograph. Oh, yeah, the Kodak information. Yep, there it is. This was developed in the 1980s. Pre-digital, for sure. Mm. And then I reach out to one of the many government types that, you know, I just call people, I leave messages, they never want to get back. So this was Representative Andre Carson, folks, he, Indiana. He was holding committees, a house uh, investigation, counterterrorism, counter espionage, counter uh, something else, you know, threat. All, everything's a threat with our government. It's a threat. This is the big narrative going to get worse wait yeah i heard all right so i leave a message i don't expect anything the phone rings about three four five whatever days later i see 202 and i'm about to hang up thinking it's spam a woman says is this and she uses my name i said yes i what are you selling she said well i'm amy munch i'm a national security advisor with representative andre carson's committee oh you are that's interesting we got your message and uh you have photographs showing a stealth plane and a UFO. I said, yes, I do. Would you make, send us copies? I said, I'll send you digital copies right away. That's great. I'll move them right up the chain. So I send the copies. 
I wait for the response. And uh, she says, oh, we got him. Oh, good. And then I wait, and I'm still waiting. Why? Because the government had no intention of telling you, the American people, the real agenda behind their phony UFO stories and hearings. It's not about a threat from real extraterrestrials who, remember the government says, well, we've known about UFOs for 70 years. Oh, and this threat that you're talking about? So you're going to tell us that a hostile, off-world race with technology that can get them here through space and probably time that could wipe us off the surface of this planet because right. incinerate everything. Yep. They haven't attacked us in 70 years, but there's a threat, right? And now, oh, wait, now you, this was like, you know, last year. Oh, you're going to appoint a committee for six months to study it. So where was the committee to study the threat for, of Russia to Ukraine or vice versa? No, we don't have those committees set up. And if there's a threat, if you think there's a threat from a armed entity, let alone from outer space, you don't set up a committee for people. If you do not see that you are being so badly disinformed and, and played for the fool, I can't help you. This, we, it's all here. The explanation goes back a long time. These hearings at their fundamental level, and we'll get to the fact about non-human aliens anytime you want. This is to raise more money for more weapons, mm. for more endless dead-end U.S. wars. And there, guess what? This one they're going to get. The one that they've been pushing for now for a long time, going back a long time, is to try to destroy Russia, dominate, and take possession. Right. The prophecies from 1987 tell another story. From 1987, these prophecies tell another story when they predict that the U.S. and Russia will clash violently with the most sophisticated weapons, that the U.S. in its guise of seeking global peace and globalization, harmonization, is seeking only world domination this is going to run into the final roadblock for this government, this military. I don't say it with any joy. We live here. We are the recipients, those of us who don't have a bunker somewhere for the, you know, the higher level people that are sequestered away when the dreadful war releases just horrific weapons on us that have been developed a lot of them are under the guise of this UFO thing. But why would our country do that when it's not a win-win for anybody? Any because, country? sure, well, we don't care about win-win. We care about win. But and, but if there's a nuclear the war, there's no win for anybody. But you're talking from a rational point of view. So let me just tell you, there are people and have been the agenda for world hegemony started a couple hundred years ago. This is another thing I won't go into deeply. It's been a existence long goal of what we call the United States, which is really uh, parties that operate largely, but not exclusively in the shadows, what are sometimes called deep states, secret military, et cetera. You see, there are people, believe it or not, that are deluded and insane enough to think that they can win, they can rule the world. Yeah, you know, a cinder. You go go peek your head out afterwards, take a breath, and you're now you have lung cancer. So those people exist. And a lot of the people, I'm just going to be blunt about it, there are people, and it's known in higher levels of military, military intelligence, that are highly apocalyptic, highly, uh, you know, dead end days kind of stuff. And they're in this branch of, uh, you know, development and government, if you want to call it that, military, and they push for this. They're pushing for a final conflagration because they simply believe, they believe, they believe long changed, edited, redacted, rewritten myths based on some elements because some of the original writings of Enoch, 
Jeremiah predicted many things, and then these things got changed. So here's the thing I kept keep on saying, humans. And this. of course, the big thing these days is about non-human. You know, that, that makes it threatening, you see. That makes it scary monsters, evil guys, you know, at the risk well, of what saying. Did, what did David Gresh call them? Uh, uh, non-human biologics, right? Okay, so here's what it is. And by the way, there is someone, we've put this up. I have all this online. Uh, a guy I know named Kenneth Smith. He was formerly vice president, director of operations for what was called orbital flight systems, uh, top secret clearances. He was in charge of a 20 something million dollar budget at rocket launch, all this stuff. A guy who was in there and is now out of there. Uh, he follows this material quite well because he knows, he understands where the truth mm -hmm. is. He has friends still in, uh, let's say, uh, aerospace with top secret clearances, and he speaks with them. They know. Not all the people there know, but there are people that know, and they, they've they said to him, as he's said to me, mm, it's the Billy Meyer case. It's the Billy Meyer case. So here's what it is. There were crashes at places like Roswell. That's not the only one. In some cases, in some crashes, certain living entities. Like the greys? So-called greys, which don't exist anymore. They're not here and they're not abducting any, but we'll get to, if, if we need to, it's really not important because those abductions that are done, perhaps with the exception of less than two hands, over 200 years have been done, a few have been done for contact examination purposes by some of the folks that zip in and zip out, oh, look at that species, and they do that, but they don't harm people. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is these so-called beings, as was explained to Meyer also in 1987, and we're going to come back to another part of this right now, these beings are androids. They are not the extraterrestrials who send them on various exploratory missions as we will do when we advance our robotics and androids. If we survive ourselves, we may not actually, but that's something else. So this is AI. And, you know, are you maybe, talking about the, the, the grays that they're like um, created for maybe they're doing investigate investigations on our planet and that's what they, so they're not really living creatures they're ai creatures they have they are life forms but they're not inspirited like we are um I, i'm gonna see while we're speaking for a moment I, i'll keep on telling you more if i can i will give you something a few sentences from uh these and you know on androids and this will perhaps explain things for people because of the terms that are actually used here. So. So this, was the whole David Grush hearing a PSYOP or? Well, listen, here's what I will say. And actually I'll tell you what, um, I think I have it right here. What Dave, what um, my friend, uh, oh yes, here he is. Um, he, this is from Kenneth Smith, what he says regarding the, the, the committee hearing with David Grush pertaining to UFOs and recovered alien bodies. Here's what D Kenneth Smith had to say. David Grush, a former U.S. intelligence bureaucrat and former Air Force major, is an apparent whistleblower who testified before this subcommittee. Kenneth goes on. So... If Grush is going to talk to Congresswoman Nancy Mace in a SCIF, that is Sensitive Compartmented Information Facility, about information he cannot talk about to the subcommittee, this will then be a select few only. Nonetheless, the information will still be concealed from the public. So he says, a certain department of the government knows exactly what was recovered as far as the life forms or non-life forms. If Grush would have said the extraterrestrials were moved from the crash site, the cat would be out of the bag. Likewise, if he said that androids were removed from the 
crash sites, the cat would also be out of the bed. The whole premise is to scare, this is from an aerospace guy, scare the public and keep them in the dark at the same time. Hence, the word biologics was used by Grush, which technically could mean anything but, in fact, some kind of a life form. But he did say non-human. Non-human. It right. says an android is non-human. In my opinion, Grush is not a whistleblower, but an individual argumentee or augmentee, pardon me, deployment operative. He appears to be a well-rehearsed tactician mm. to feed the House Oversight Committee with a proper BS from the deep state. If he's a whistleblower, why all the secrecy? Right. This is a, and he goes on, he says, the government hearings persist with the fake ET attack storyline to squeeze more money out of taxpayers yeah. for additional weapons. And, and this is an aerospace guy. It's not Michael, the little scientist. Yeah, yeah. Now that makes total sense because all those funds were in, you know, inappropriated, like incorrectly. So they're, you know, they're bilking taxpayers out of billions of dollars for their UFO research. <laughs> well, let me give you the other shoe here just so people understand why we are concerned. Right. Here, I'm going to give you bullet points from a number of sentences without reading everything. Mm -hmm. Here's something about if the Third World War actually happens, that scientists, and he talks about all the kind of suffering and everything, so, the fault of irresponsible scientists who by cloning will create human machines for military purposes, devoid of conscience and feelings, and create immensely deadly and all annihilating computer-like weapons. Listen to this, because this is a very specific category, folks. Evil military powers will wreak havoc with computerized and nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, whereby, listen to this, it will happen that computerized weapons become independent and cannot be controlled any longer by human beings. All of this is from 1987, folks, before Tic Tac videos and David Grush. And then he says again, what's going to happen in the northern countries where these unknown weapons of laser and computer controlled types? And this is Billy Meyer saying all this stuff. This is what was presented wow. to him by one of the ETs. And again, not only nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons, but enormously deadly systems of computer-controlled weapons only in the beginning stages of development today and will be invented and constructed during the third millennium. This is not a UFO hoaxer, people. Mm. And your is government hearings... To take, when is this supposed to take place? Well, it's it's in the future. They will not give dates on that because the reason they gave us this information so that we would have time events, indicators, when things start to go into computer technologies. I've got a thing, a, another prophecy thing from his 1958. He's foretelling the electronic interconnection of com home computers that hadn't even been invented electronically around the world that's called the internet and in the same passages the danger that the u.s and the eu will biochip every man woman and child on the face of the earth to wow. control them that's my, under my one nagging question not to sure. interrupt you is if he was privy to all of this incredible information why didn't these beings human-like beings go directly to like the president or they knew we had media you could stand in front of a camera and just let the sure. entire globe know well there's a couple answers here one they did prepare an outreach to the carter administration that was dictated if you will the, the information in terms from these people to Billy, transcribes everything, gives it to someone, one of the actual lead investigators in the case who had a connection to the uh, CIA, for better or worse, and it was on its way to the Carter administration. Yeah. Apparently, one way or another, it was either turned down or didn't make it all the way. You know how these things are. Mm. They know that our governments and our government leaders, uh, you know, can't just, our government leaders, even if they wanted to, they can't say, oh, good, let's do that and sit down. This we have to understand 
objects like this, which are now being made into, you know, horror stories by the government for this next generation of threats, people start passing this information around. If you want to people that are curious, we, I answer all my email. I hate to say it, but I do. Okay. So what happens is if you try to go to a government, they're not, they can't, for all the reasons they want it on their terms or not at all. And it's understandable. Here's the strange thing you have to you have to understand. We have to understand. It is understandable to our governments, the way they're set up around the world, since like 99% of them are all so corrupt, that anything outside of their control right. and their constraint is a threat because they can't. What are they going to say? We don't know. So now this government, which has been lying to you, admits it. We've known about this for 70 years. We've been lying to you is what they're really so, saying. So why no. didn't they just fly over major cities? Like well, these, I want to call them Palladians. What are those, they called again? They're not Palladians. They're the Playaren. The Playaren crafts have been seen and other craft. But here's the thing. What they have already long ago determined, even when they started the mission, that what they learned was that when those extraterrestrials from the past, the gods from the past, uh, which show up in craft, people start worshiping or they get very afraid. In our day and age, one military after another, as our military is already now firing at the Tic Tac craft mm -hmm. from one of the you know the hidden groups, mm -hmm. as Billy said, that's a bad idea because that one of those groups is going to join the enemies of the West when we finally get this war pushed and we think we're going to dominate the world. Russia, China, and other parties will have the assistance of one of those groups whose craft these imbeciles in Washington have decided they have to fire upon. Oh, so, so they, they can choose sides? Like, if this apocalyptic event occurs, the... It's part of the, the prophecies that under certain conditions, long-hidden descendants of the gods of the past, extraterrestrials, will show themselves and assist those powers being attacked by the West. That's not good for us. Mm. Of course, going trying to dominate other people is a bad idea. However, I'm not in charge of that. So um, what we have here is the, the they long ago determined that to create a, an irrefutable, undeniable presence, a craft is coming down. That's going to get, everything is going to come at it, and people will kill themselves, they'll kill others, they will go nuts, the masses. Sure, a lot of people say, oh, I want to see, but even some of those people can't handle it. That's true, you but the, the interesting you thing, and I talked about this in another interview I did, um, the majority of people just don't care about UAPs or UFOs, they're just disinterested in, in this There's whole the thing. Agenda. That's see, here's what they did. Look, I have tried, I've lectured in universities, I've been in, in lectured in many different countries and all that stuff. The hardest thing in to do in this country is to get interviewed. Let's say Tucker Carlson was all about UFOs. Our information was sent, they wouldn't they wouldn't allow that to happen. None of these people that claim to want to show the truth, um, mm -mm, they're not gonna touch this because. It shows the lie. It's just about as bad as having the ETs land. In other words, if people, you know, I, I do big multimedia presentations, dozens, dozens. Of, it's it's inescapable. U.S. astronaut Gordon Cooper saw the original photos from the seventies. Right. We have a video. He says that you know these are real photos. It's good. Right. The man's telling the truth. And I don't know why people accuse him of hoaxing. I was interrogated for three months by a guy who calls me up on a Saturday and. January 20, what was it, 19 or 17, 2017, originally. And he says, uh, I'm an investigator. I think this case is a hope. Will you talk to me? Sure. Every Saturday, the phone rings. It wasn't a conversation. It was, answer this, answer this. Answer. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. And then he disappears, comes back at the end of August, five months later. Now I'll tell you who I am, and I'll tell you about your Billy Meyer case. He said in that delightful East Coast accent that we all love so much. 
My name is Joe Tisk. I'm a former top-level investigator and supervisor for the United States Air Force Office of Special Investigation and U.S. Department of Defense. Open up your email. Okay. Do you see that? Tabletop, close-ups, citations, USAF, Department of Defense. His name, him, right there. He said, now, I've spent, and he explained all the research he did after he interrogated me and looked into everything. He said, your Billy Meyer case is 100% ironclad authentic. I will take on any skeptics on your behalf. He did. Annihilated a couple of people. He said, I can't talk to these people anymore. Mm. They don't understand. They're too stupid. He said, people in ufology are stupid. I said, I agree. So we've had, to you know, we have people to this day using state-of-the-art contemporary computer al analysis. It's all real. I've got two more articles up online showing these photos and films and all. Okay. This is why they censored it. They can't have World War III if this is really right. no threat to us. We can't dominate the world. Right. We've exported all your jobs. We've sent all the, the wealth of this country to a little Nazi in the Ukraine. Correct. What are you kidding me? And because there's a threat to Ukraine, we've got to stand by Ukraine. We got to stand by this. This guy doesn't know. He's also on a you know expiration date as far as the government's concerned too. Billy Meyer had a large black armored limousine with dip Ukraine diplomatic plates come up. Three men get out with a large drone, six propeller drone, cameras filming his property. To this day, the Swiss, CIA-backed Swiss military, does flyovers and incursions and drops listening devices there. This is wow. not a UFO case, folks. This is the <laughs> concern of a lot of military intelligence around the world. They know these players are not going to attack us. They know they're very, they just want, they want to find out everything they can because they also know this guy's telling the truth. Are they still in touch with Billy? Every week. Really? Yes. We we just put up the 856th official contact. And he's had many, many more unofficial that were not for public consumption. They're loaded with information, current events, medical information. Uh, Billy Meyer, well, don't want to offend anybody. However you feel about it, in 1947 and 49, young, 10, and um, let's see, 11 or 12-year-old Billy Meyer, mm -hmm. is warning about a very dangerous pandemic coming in the future. Mm -hmm. It will start by virtue of a meeting between a Chinese ruler and a futurely humiliated prominent american who hated what the country did to him when they threw him out of the presidency this would happen a few decades later the first iteration of this would be in coming out of a laboratory in guangdong china through an accident this would be sars and then there would be in the third millennium this other dreadful disease which would also start as a respiratory disease which would come out through a leak in another Chinese laboratory accidentally and would spread around the world. And there will be a great danger from, and again, I'm just saying this is information. Don't get mad at me. Don't even get mad at Billy. Great danger from medications that would be forcibly administrated to people wow. that would not have been tried. And he through. predicted all this. Yeah. And then uh, predictions on this go all the way up, even 1995, he's again warning about this. And then I started publishing on my site, I have something called the new online COVID test. I have to add, there's another thing that just came up. Beginning on February 25th, 2020, I published information starting that I'd received two days prior from him. That was a document translated into German, then translated into English. The play Aaron gave him a dozen points on what this disease was. No theories, simply stated facts. This is a pandemic. Uh, it is spread also by hidden spreaders. It, it can be incubating up to three months. Children will be the first 
hidden spreaders, they will be immune initially. It goes on and on. The WHO is largely responsible for being irresponsible. There are economic and political motivations here, why they didn't shut everything down. He goes on and on. That's only 12 points in that one. Then another, um, you know, let's say uh, 30. What, what else is Billy doing to get this information to, you know, to the rest of the globe? Like, I'm sure he's still working very hard it's published to save humanity, if you you want to put it that way. Like publishes it. He cannot force the world to pay attention. Look, there's parts of the world that pay attention, but only so they can very mistakenly think they can strategize. They think they can outsmart the prophecies. So this stuff is read at the Vatican, and it's read at the Vatican for a very specific reason, based on who. Billy Meyer is. Yeah, I, I wouldn't and, trust the Vatican as far as I could. Well, of course not, but I'm telling you why they, I just want to say this because I'm not going to say too much more, but they are interested in this information because the Vatican knows who Billy Meyer is. Mm, I'm sure. Okay. Now, it's also known at the higher levels of military intelligence, certainly in Russia and other places. And long ago, the predictions were, and Billy Meyer published when he was 10 years old, a poem about how the great bear will come and put an end to the attacks from the from Europe and America. And it will be the great bear that will settle things down so that the true teaching can be taught and peace can come to the world. Yeah, I heard that too, that Russia was actually going to be a facilitator of global peace. Well, a lot of people that say that have read the Meyer material because they wouldn't right. know it either way. And, you know, look, people put out, so they read it and they change things and try to make it as their own and all the rest of that nonsense. But that's, you asked, why doesn't Billy, there's no major, you have to understand, major news stations, newspapers, uh, even online entities and all, have CIA implanted elements in management. Oh, I believe that. Yeah, I totally believe that. This isn't it just be seems true. crazy to me to have access to all this um, proof, imagery, documentation, warnings, like, and not, you know, like not have a, a global spokesperson to try to wake up I mean, I know we're waking up slowly, like the, the masses are, at least some of us are. But I don't know, it just seems like such a waste of valuable information. Are you well, are you the official spokesperson for him? I'm, I mean, obviously. I'm the authorized American media representative. Right. I asked to do it. He said, okay. I said, you don't pay me. I don't pay you. We keep it clean. I will publish your information the way you put it out. I'm not going to change anything. I am free to have my own opinions. I can sure. disagree. Oh, agreed, agreed, agreed. And that's what I've been doing since, when is it, 2004? I think it is something like that. Yeah. So the thing is that Billy Meyer is the official real spokesperson mm -hmm. for these people. He is their contact person. He is their representative. And he teaches these people. He writes the teaching for them, too. Look, you want to know why? It's because we have an insane belief cultivated through religion and politics about dominations and hierarchies. And it's all laden with fear and threats. Yes. We have threats in religion. We have threats in politics. We have threats. Here they're selling more war via threats that are completely imaginary that only will come true if we keep provoking other people that have a right to be here because they've been here longer than we have. A lot of them. So for those of us that are interested in this, we don't have to run out and try and change the world because that's not going to happen. We don't, you know, don't go marching in the street or throwing stones at government buildings. That's, you know, we're not revolutionaries in that sense. No. What we're revolutionary about is the, the you know, the, what Billy calls the silent revolution of truth, the title of the film that we put out, to, uh, filmed in 2006, put out in 2008. And he said, it's inevitable. 
that in time, but the attrition before we get there, this is voluntary. We didn't have to go this way. But people are unthinking. They vote people into office or allow people to you know, ascend to office that are incompetent, that are only interested in their own vested interests. No matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, let me ask people, how is it that a man who's a, a billionaire and who's gotten himself in trouble raises money from you, the people of this country? How is it that a man who's extremely wealthy sitting in the office of presidency of the presidency is exporting your and my money, tax dollars, overseas to a Nazi? And as Billy Meyer told me in 2006, I put a video up, it's up on the internet if you want to know. I asked him, Billy, was the Iraq war fundamentally about oil? I thought he'd say yes. He said no. Fundamentally. It's about your dollar, because if things go a certain way, you may as roll, well roll cigarettes with your paper money. Mm. 2017, he described the now impending cashless society. Yeah, well, that's was, already happened. And he said, the American people will be dispossessed. And the government, this government that's worried about threats from outer space, that's the real threat to us will turn the police and military against the partly heavily armed population. People all over the world are going to be dispossessed because this whole, remember 58, biochipping, now they're going for the cashless thing, and, and, and stupid people think it's more important to put something that's going to track you like a dog in your hand or your head so you can wave your hand at the gas pump. That's how stupid people have become. And they're willing to put up with it. So, folks, if that's what you want, that's what you get. And what's coming is you, you'll own nothing. You will own nothing. Well, isn't that the WEF yep. slogan? You will own nothing and be happy. You know, and you have people like Max Egan. I'm sure you, you, you've you watched him. Did you ever watch Max Egan? Nationally, but I can't. It's what? called the Crow House. I mean, this man dedicates hours a day for decades to try to wake people up to all this government sure. stuff and just everything. I well, couldn't he's even not on CBS News either, is he? No. <laughs> no. So not. you have to understand this, folks. You're not going to get this material in a government. I sent it. They could have it any time. I've... I've sent information to Tim Birch. Birch is, he even gave me a, a you know a thumbs up on Twitter, and then when I tried to because I posted something, and then when he probably realized what this was, now he won't mention this, and he's he's a champion of the people here. About got to tell the truth, really. Yeah, we have so many champions of the people. Yeah. So eventually, by the way, just in the other what it's worth department, and I think this is still quite a ways off. First of all, we're going to have two coming civil. When Billy published that the first time in 1981, I read it in 86. The United States will have two coming civil wars, and it can't be helped. It, but the country breaks up into four or five territories. I laughed. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing now. It, you see, the polarization, it just keeps increasing. And eventually, those things will come to pass, and then something else will happen. All right. When finally... Finally, tens of thousands of people, I want I don't know what they are, citizens of what, people living in this country will march on the government and take it down. Mm. But the pain in between, you'll have, you know, it'll be, you know, there are people, and I, we're not, we're not revolutionaries. We're just, that's in the material. We don't promote that just in case anybody knows, because here's the thing. There's some weird things happening out there with supposedly people in Peru with their faces being ripped. A lot of stuff being done to promote the fearful, evil, non-human alien. Look at the cow mutilations, too. They're blaming military. That. Military. I, I knew that. I knew yeah. that's all right. military stuff. And so maybe other things happening now because... See, with these hearings and this progression of the threat agenda, I called this out years ago when, when Lou Elizondo and a defense industry shill, Chris Mellon, came forward. 
uh, th the threat, we're assessing threat to threat, threat. Everything's threat from what? From who? From the, our government. But so, Michael, this, why would they do that to cows? What it, is it? Is it enough of a visual impact to the human psyche to see these cows being mutilated? So, what are they yeah. airlifting them? mutilating them and then dropping them back down like i'm gonna guess that in many cases it's it, it could be that because they, they do this with cer certain surgical tools and the other thing may be that simply they come at a certain in certain locations at times when they know they're not observed they come out they do what they're going to do and this has already happened to human beings too but this is is what you're hinting at this is to terrorize and threaten and make people fearful of what them evil aliens yeah, right. from outer space. Right. The War of the Worlds broadcast was done for the first time by... Oh, epic. That was a PSYOP commanded by President Roosevelt and H.G. Wells... really? Yes, H.G. Wells and Orson Welles, the brilliant actor, were told under threat of death to them and their families... No will... kidding. And that was the first kind of media terrorizing of evil men from our little beings, green men, whatever. Yeah. So this is going on now. This is going on. So now. that was almost like a clinical experiment to see <clears throat> how we would react, you know, using the airwaves uh, to frighten folks. And, and the kill themselves. Was, That's, yeah, they, the result they, was crazy. Look, there are things that have happened in terms of what, what we would call a uh, psyops that really would curl our hair and i don't want to i don't want to know more because there are things that are done that are just bar barbaric and um you know they're done by people who are basically without conscience yeah low consciousness but a scientific ability and they just use barbarous things in human beings it's all done out of this aspect of the human psyche that's very disturbed in people so we you know, brought these photographs to the Congress. They mm. hit them. There is your answer. There's your answer, ladies and gentlemen. If not, well, you want to try and do something, you write to your Congress people or right. the people in those hearings and say, hey, I just saw this program on Carol Ann's channel. And, and it, could this be true? I went and I looked at this guy's website. Here's the link to this one. Here's where he sh shows the correspondence with your national security advisor. Here's where, he, you know, this and it. Is it true? Could it be true? If you know, here's the photos. They even ident we identified who the pilot of the stealth was. He was a test pilot named Hal Farley, my webmaster. We've got stuff up showing. I mean, it, you don't see this in the congressional hearings because they want to snow you and scare you. Yeah. Where are those photos today? The ones that you got from the locker. That the, the ones like the, the originals one are in it. Switzerland, and you know, I have digital copies, of course, but the originals are safely stored in Switzerland. And you know, we have a even photo images of the back of them with the stuff. It's like if, if these aren't real, folks, then you know, try and explain some of the things we found in these photos and try and explain uh, how, how come you can't show that they're hoaxed. <clears throat> Pardon me, boy. Oh, boy. Well, Michael, I have so many more questions for you. I'm sure our, our listeners do too. Would you be open to scheduling another one of these? I mean, I know you, your time Absolutely. is valuable, but um, that's, that's what's the value of it. When somebody really actually wants to, you know, at least find out what the heck has this guy been doing and what's behind it. And how can I find out for myself? So of course, exactly. naturally. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's brilliant. I'll be in touch with you, Michael. And of course, anybody listening, if you have any questions for Michael, you can post them in the comment section below. Or are you open to email, Michael, or just your website? No, I am. And here's what, depending on how many questions you get and all that, probably one of the better things, since you and I are going to do this again, if you don't mind, let them either post questions there or forward them to you for you to say, okay, okay here's they can a question for you. And then we just let the audience determine, you and the audience determine, what you want to hear, what you want answers to. And now, you know, it doesn't depend on me. I'm just trying to extend my, you know, stay on the planet longer too. I'm not, I'm not the guy privy to all the top secret stuff, folks, just in case you get ideas. Um, but it's out there and I'm not the only person putting it out now. There's people in different countries putting it. So if the people want the truth, 
it's out there very easy free by the way free right that's yes if you want one of billy's books you can learn to think straight <laughs> yeah i'm gonna have to get me one of them too because um just brilliant book called the might of the thoughts i can't recommend it enough okay. that book it, i mean it, there's no non-brilliant book of billy's but when he says we have to learn to first of all self-responsibility completely it's nobody's fault it's nobody's saving it it's us we take responsibility we have to determine how we deal with things so it doesn't mean life's you know just a cakewalk it means we have to work it out and we have to learn to see things as they are and that's the big not, problem. yeah not how we want them to be not how we fear they are no we have to see things as they actually are and then we can make our choices once we have thoughts that are clear, we get certain feelings and then we take actions. The action should be informed and conscious. I even teach a workshop on this stuff. I have it on a DVD with a Meyer lecture and then teaching an element of how to, de how to deal in your own life with the things. Because these days, just seeing things as they are, it isn't just out there because we take on. We're affected from out there to closer, whether it's work or school, it's home, it's family, it's our own issues. Right. There are ways to apply this thinking to safely deal with it ourselves. Uh, you know, for, for a certain percentage, of course, people, not everything works for everybody, but we try to make things available that are going to help people to find the truth. It's that simple. There is a good saying, the truth will set you free. And a lot of people say, you know, and in the meantime, it'll piss you off and all that. But yeah, it'll really yeah. irritate. <laughs> right. How does it be? So yes, Carol Ann, uh, you will get in touch. You'll let me know. Yes, absolutely. Until the next one, just give whatever breathing space you want. And we go at it. Let your audience submit questions and challenges. It's just that, you know, one thing that's helpful, folks, don't say it looks like it's, we have no reference point. These things are set up, these photo things they're very intricate there's more information in these photos than you know about but we we have analyses and you can start looking and films where you see these craft moving around you're going how's that possible so go ahead and, and you can certainly you don't have to accept or believe or whatever terms you want just go to a place of saying okay this is my question this is my challenge mm. i've heard this or this person claims that sure we'll address it and so i thank you very very much for this opportunity and we will oh. do it. And I thank you so much. Like I have at least 20 questions. I know I want to ask you for when we talk again, but mm. um, thank you so much. And again, folks leave any questions or comments below, or you can email me. I'll have everything running across the screen. And of course, visit Michael's blog as well. It's fascinating. Amazing. You'll be sitting there for hours. <laughs> thank you, Michael. God bless. And I'll be with you uh, shortly. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you.